Hey everyone, Daniel here for Rock the JVM, and this is a long overdue video on type level programming in Scala 3. So in this video, we're going to sort types at compile time by making the compiler synthesize given values for us. Now, if all of this sounds sci-fi, don't worry, I'll explain everything along the way. But this video really assumes you're very comfortable with Scala, and we are going to use lots of givens for which I have another video here on the Rock the JVM channel. As always, I'll recommend that you code with me, and whenever you need to refresh your memory about this sort of technique, refer back to this video or to the written form at the blog, which with the link in the description. Now, a note of warning, what I'm about to show you in this video will probably not have immediate practical application for you, but the kind of mental gymnastics that we're going to do in this video will seriously shape your mind as a Scala developer, and you'll be able to navigate type level problems and very generic code much more easily. All right, so with that out of the way, let's move back to our little dev environment. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can sort types at compile time. Now, what does sorting types mean? We are going to design a high level list in the form of a type level list. So for example, we will uh, express the list, for example, one, two, three, four, as a linked list of types. So we are going to first design some number types, and then we are going to design a high level list, and then we are going to be able to sort that list with the type level numbers by generating givens from the compiler. All this may sound a little bit much, but we're gonna take it step by step. Now, for this part of the video, we have an equivalent Scala 2 type level programming video, which I'm gonna also link in the description. We're gonna basically follow the same encoding there. This is called the Piano Arithmetic. Piano was a mathematician, an Italian mathematician, and he expressed the relationships between natural numbers by a set of axioms. So I'm going to define a trait that I'm gonna call nat for the natural numbers. And I'm gonna define a class called zero, and I'm going to prefix that by an underscore because the zero has a different meaning here in this column, and I'm gonna extend nat here. So this will be our first natural number as a type. So we define the number underscore zero as a class. You can also define it as a trait, it doesn't really matter that much. And I'm going to define another class, and I'm gonna call this successor, and I'm gonna make this take a type argument n, which is a nat. So you know this little symbol here, n must be a subtype of nat, and this will also extend nat. So by this definition here, we've basically defined the entire natural number set because we have defined the number zero and the succession of two consecutive numbers. So for example, we can express the number two as successor of successor of zero. And number 2021, which is the year when I'm recording this, as successor of successor of successor of whatever successor of zero. And the succession has 2021 nested successions there. All right, so we can basically express any kind of natural number by referring it or relating it to zero. And to make things a little easier for us, I'm going to define some type aliases. I'm gonna define a type underscore one as successor of zero. And I'm going to create a type two, three, four, and five, for example. And I'm going to use that as a, some type aliases. So I'm gonna have type underscore two, underscore three, four, and five. All right, so we have our first five natural numbers quote unquote numbers, and we're gonna use them to test our little type level comparison between numbers. Now, just as a warm up, I'm going to define a less than relationship. And the less than relationship between these numbers, I'm gonna define that as a trait. I'm gonna call this less than with the less than symbol because we're in Scala and of course we can. And this less than takes two type arguments, a number A, which is a type A rather, which is a subtype of nat, and another type argument B, which is also a nat. And by the existence of a less than between A and B, we're basically proving that A is less than P. Now, how can we prove that? We'll make the compiler generate given instances of this particular type for the types for which 
the logical less than relationship holds true. So here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to define an object and I'm going to call this less than. And I'm going to define a given instance. Rather, I'm going to define many given instances. But before I define the given instances, we need to be able to encode this less than relationship to this representation of natural numbers that we defined before. So in terms of this representation of natural numbers with number zero and the succession of two consecutive numbers, when is A less than B, assuming that A and B are natural numbers? Well, we can define some axioms of the less than relationship. So for example, we can say that zero is less than a successor of any other number. And that is true because the successor of any other number starts with at least one. So zero must be less than the successor of any other number. And also, if we have a less than b, then that means that the successor of a must be less than the successor of b as well. So these are the two fundamental truths about the less than relationship. So we can say that zero is less than the successor of anyone else. And if we have a less than b by some other demonstration, we can therefore prove that successor a is also less than successor b. Now, let's say, for example, that we want to test whether 3 is less than 5. We don't really know whether 3 is less than 5 in this representation yet. We obviously know from mathematical uh, foundations that 3 is less than 5, but we need to prove it by virtue of these two axioms. Now, how can we prove 3 is less than 5? Well, we can prove 3 is less than 5 if we can prove that 2 is less than 4 by virtue of the second axiom. So I'm going to put an equivalence sign here because this is an if and only if kind of relationship. So 3 is less than 5 if and only if 2 is less than 4 because 3 is the successor of 2 and 5 is the successor of 4. And this is also true if and only if 1 is less than 3, which is also true if and only if we have 0 less than 2 which is equivalent to saying 0 is less than the successor of 1, which is true, because 0 is less than the successor of any other number. And because 0 is less than the successor of 1, that's the same as saying 0 less than 2, which also proves 1 less than 3, which proves that 2 is less than 4, which proves 3 is less than 5. So, 3 is less than 5, this sentence is proven true by this chain of inference. Alright, so I hope this makes sense. Now, how do we translate these mathematical axioms into something that a compiler can understand? Well, we can say that 0 is less than the successor of any other number by making the compiler generate an automatic given instance for the less than between 0 and the successor of any natural number. So here's how I'm going to encapsulate that. I'm going to say given, I'm going to call this basic, because this is the basic axiom of the less than relationship. So I'm going to have a basic and I'm going to take a type argument, let's call this n, which is a natural. And I'm going to make the compiler synthesize an instance of less than between zero and the successor of that number. And I'm going to use the skull three syntax. So I'm going to say given basic with the type argument n, which is a natural, this automatically creates an instance of less than between zero and successor of n with whatever implementation the uh, trait might have. So because the trait doesn't really have any abstract methods, I need to say something along the lines of with and then open and close curly braces. Now this token over here with curly braces is a little bit annoying, but we're going to make do with it because this is proper Scala syntax. So now we need to encapsulate the second axiom, which is to say that a is less than b if and only if successor of a is less than successor of b. Now I'm going to make the compiler use a given instance of less than between a and b to generate a given instance between successor of a and successor of b. So I'm going to say given I'm going to call this inductive because this is an inductive kind of axiom which lets us create this kind of inference chain. So I'm going to have inductive with some type arguments. I'm going to call this a which is a nat and b which is a nat. And I'm going to rely using a using clause. Uh, I'm going to use a less than between a and b. So I don't really care about 
the name of this instance. And I'm going to create an instance of less than between successor to A and successor to B with the appropriate curly braces. So basically, if we have an instance of less than between A and B, the compiler can create on demand an instance of less than between successor A and successor B. Now, to make things a little bit easier to test, I'm also going to define an apply method that's given two numbers A as a nat and B as a nat. And I'm going to have a using clause. I'm going to call this LT. Now I'm going to need the name of this instance, which is less than between A and B. And this will return an instance of less than between A and B which is basically the LT that I'm using as the using clause. So this is basically a summon function, or in terms of implicits, this is an implicitly kind of function, all right? So this basically surfaces out whatever given value the compiler was able to generate for this type. All right, cool. So let's test this out. So I'm going to have, for example, zero less than two, for example. And I'm going to use the apply method. So I'm going to say less than with underscore zero and underscore two and make the compiler infer that for me or create the appropriate given value. And if I don't see anything red in my code, it means that the compiler can automatically prove that there exists an instance of less than between zero and two, which is to say that zero is less than two. So the compiler was able to prove that the type underscore zero is quote unquote less than the type underscore two. However, for example, if I say val uh, three less than one as less than between underscore three and underscore one, this will not compile. So notice we have a little compiler error here saying no implicit argument of type was being able to be passed to this apply method. Rather, the compiler was unable to generate a less than between underscore three and underscore one. And if the compiler cannot prove that, it means that three less than one cannot be proven. So we will consider for our little sake to be false. So whatever is not proven or provable by the compiler, it means false in our terms. However, if we say one less than three as less than between underscore one and underscore three, this will compile just fine. So if I hit recompile, we will be able to compile this code without any problems. Now, how does this work? Well, because we're using the apply method, the compiler requires an instance of less than between underscore one and underscore three. So this is caused by the apply using clause. So apply requires the presence of an under a less than between one and three. Now, the compiler can invoke the inductive method to automatically create an instance of less than between one and three if it has an instance between uh, zero and two. So inductive can create something like this. If it can have access to, so if it has a less than between zero and two. So if the compiler has access to, or if it can create somehow an instance of less than between zero and two, it can also create a given instance between one and three. Now from the two given definitions here, we have basic here, which can automatically create an instance of less than between zero and successor of anything else. So right now we can apply, or rather the compiler can use basic with underscore one to automatically create a less than between zero and successor to one which is the definition of the basic given instance, which is the exact same thing as less than between zero and two. So the compiler can automatically create this. If the compiler can create this, then the compiler can automatically create the less than between one and three as well. So it can automatically pass an instance of one less than three to the apply method, therefore compiling our code. So this is the sequence of steps that the compiler can use to quote unquote prove the type relationship between one and three here. Now, if you wanna be really, really fancy, you can name this variable in a really 
James Bond style, you can say one less than three with backticks, and one less than three is a proper name of this value. It has nothing to do with a mathematical operation, nor with the type. This is just the name of the value. So this is some other technique that you can use to name your variables in a fancy way. All right, so we can use this less than relationship to prove the relationship between numerical types using these two given synthesis quote unquote methods here to make the compiler prove the relationship between these types by creating an appropriate given value of the less than type. Now we can also create a less than or equal type so we can follow the exact same steps and I'm actually going to be very shameless and copy the code here and I'm going to define a trait less than or equal so I'm going to have a less than or equal sign and the axioms of less than or equal so I'm going to say axioms of less than or equal include the following zero is less than or equal to any other number so zero is the smallest natural number as we know so it's less than or equal to any other number so the basic axiom says that for every number which is a natural we can create a less than or equal between zero and that particular number so i'm going to say zero and n so this was the basic axiom of less than. And similarly, we have an inductive axiom, which is to say that if a is less than or equal to b, then successor of a is also less than or equal to successor of b. So I'm going to have a is less than or equal to b, if and only if successor of a is less than or equal to successor of b. So the inductive method says that for two nat natural numbers a and b, if we have a less than or equal between a and b, then the compiler can automatically create a less than or equal between successor of a and successor of b with the appropriate tokens here. Now we can also have an apply method that given two type arguments a and b, if we have a less than, I'm actually going to call this LTE for less than or equal, and I'm going to use the proper type here, less than or equal between a and b, I'm going to basically summon that and return or surface that to the user. So I'm going to use LTE here. And with this type in place, we can also do a bunch of tests. So I'm going to define a value and I'm going to use the backtick technique here. I'm going to say zero less than zero, and I'm going to create an instance of, or rather surface out a less than between underscore zero and underscore zero, which is obviously true. I'm going to define a value, let's say one less than or equal to one, which is the less than or equal applied to underscore one underscore one. This also compiles, which is very nice. I'm going to say, for example, three is less than or equal to five, which is a less than or equal apply method invoked on the types underscore three and underscore five. This also compiles and let's try an invalid one. Let's call this invalid LTE as less than or equal between, let's say, underscore four and underscore one. So this will not compile, the compiler cannot prove that, and so we will deem that to be false. Whatever the compiler cannot prove is false. So this is false. All right, so we can now compare numbers as types at compile time. All right, so in this video, we learned how to establish type relationships at compile time. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can sort lists of types with a quick sort algorithm, not with a merge sort as we did with the Scala 2 version, but with a quick sort in the next video to this series. Now, if you like this one, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Check me out on Twitter and LinkedIn. I share fresh updates on upcoming material and check out my website at rockthejvm.com. I have hundreds of hours now on Scala functional programming, cats, Arca, Spark, and everything in between. Till next time, I'm Daniel signing off.